this sandbag is actually heavy. Like, it feels like I'm actually lifting weight for you, for you. Like, 76, 77. What are you doing? I'm lifting sandbag. What does it look like I'm doing? I'm practicing so that hopefully someday I can make Nigeria proud at the Olympics, you know? You started recording? Why didn't you say something? Where do I put this? Sorry, my people. So, in this episode, Nigerian Paralympic athletes have started winning gold. Also, Nigerian doctors are trooping out in hundreds, trying to secure jobs in Saudi Arabia. Can you believe? In Uganda, the government has received the first batch of refugees from Afghanistan. Don't forget, you can go to the timestamp in the description below to skip to the story that you want to listen to. But once again, why would you skip any of this gorgeousness? And do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and please share this video if you enjoyed it. Kodo, roll the camera. girl Adiola. Before I forget, guys, this Saturday, August 28th, I will be speaking at Jesus House in Baltimore, Maryland. Well, virtually. Sorry, I won't be there physically. <laughs> but the young adult ministry called Revolve invited me to talk about building lasting self-esteem. So if you're interested, whether you're a Christian or not, you don't have to be a Christian, but you can join us via Zoom. It's only one hour from 1 to 2 p.m. Eastern Time, and the last 20 minutes would be Q&A with your girl. So this Saturday. So our first shout out of the day goes to my sister in the Lord. Auntie Tijani Latifa at for winning the first gold medal for Nigeria at the ongoing Paralympics game in Tokyo. Ladies and gentlemen, the 39 year old lifted 117 kg, 257 pounds far at the powerlifting spot, getting close to the world record of 118 kg. As in, ah, Auntie Latifa, in case you're watching, and you too, Leo. <laughs> you know, I used to lift small, small weights like that before having the baby. <laughs> Just so I could be strong enough to deal with Koyo Doho and his shenanigans. But for somebody to lift 257 pounds, my father and my God, my sister, you are a very strong somebody. And we love and appreciate you. I love the fact that our Paralympic athletes have never disappointed. They never disappoint us. Do you guys remember 2016, five years ago, they won eight gold medals for Nigeria. 80 with two silver, two bronze, making it 12 medals for Nigeria. In fact, I feel like they do better than the regular athletes, in my opinion. No offense to the regular athletes in our duel. You would think that that with the way that these Paralympic athletes make us proud in Nigeria, you would think that we would make sure that every public place is wheelchair accessible, starting with our airport, our stores, our malls, the banks, our worship centers, churches and mosques. That doesn't mean that I don't believe in miracles, by the way, because I saw this post on Twitter and I could not believe the insensitivity and the lack of empathy of some Nigerians who are, for lack of better words, but these people are what we call holier than thou. The man tweeted that, how can you invite me to your church? And when I asked if it will accessible you said no our church is holy ground as soon as you enter you will be healed first of all how will i enter you know thank you Jerry, but I like in case you are watching that is the best question to ask somebody like that how, how will the man even enter first of all i'm telling you people with special needs have really suffered in nigeria meanwhile they are the ones making us proud right now at the olympics thank you so much jare and tilatifa and all the other contestants i'm sure that this will not even be their only gold in fact they may have won more gold by the time that this video comes out you get what i'm saying congratulations once again to you guys you guys might not know much guess what i'm just keeping it real Hello, 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 Badibola. Hello, Kunki Loko, Renu. What is the name of that, your friend? Stop rolling the camera, okay? Ah, hey, Bami. Now to the story of the day, ladies and gentlemen. Did you see Nigerian doctors attending the recruitment exercise by Saudi Arabian government in Abuja? My father and my God. For months now, our government has not paid doctors, and so they've been on strike. They're not even well paid when they're paid. Can you imagine? Every day, strike, strike, strike. And the government doesn't care. I imagine that Saudi Arabia is not the dream job destination for some people. I'm not saying everybody, but some people. Especially when it comes to religious freedom in Saudi Arabia, as well as all these laws on what women can wear and do in public. Although I've heard that white collar jobs are really lucrative in Saudi Arabia. But going there as a maid is not advisable because of human rights violations. I've talked about that in the past. But despite all that, Punch newspaper, you guys know that Punch never lies. You know, they don't lie. Punch said that hundreds of Nigerian doctors showed up to be interviewed for jobs in Saudi Arabia. Hundreds, if a hundreds. Many of these doctors said that they feel betrayed and let down by their country, Nigeria. We're very, very disappointed. I personally am disappointed. Basic things that we need, we don't have. 
some things I used to put in my money to, to, to buy what I need just for the sake of the patient. One doctor said that a lot of the people that he saw at the recruitment exercise were consultants. The reason that this is so bad is because consultants are the ones who train new doctors on procedures. So even the people who train the medical professionals, they are trying to jack back. They don't want to stay in Nigeria. Can you imagine? It's that bad. One lady said that she got there and saw a professor from way back in the day when she was in school in 2011. I left medical school April 2011. My teacher is here. My own teacher, the first person I cited here was my teacher, a seasoned pediatric consultant. I mean, this is the worst. I, I, I never knew it has gone this bad. Wow, woo. my father and my God. A lot of professionals are desperate to leave Nigeria and our government doesn't even know that anything is wrong. They don't see anything wrong. I mean, just look at my father here, the Minister of Labor and Employment. That is Chris Ungige. As of 2019, this video is from 2019, when this became an issue and they were asking me about it, the man said that he's not bothered at all because we have a surplus of doctors in Nigeria. No, I'm not concerned at all. I'm not worried. You're not? We have surplus. If you have surplus, you export. My friend, will you shut up? Not you, Jerry, my father. It's colorable. Yes, sir. In case you are watching, Mr. Ungige. Chief, do you know the meaning of surplus? That is when you have more than enough, when you have more than the quantity that you need for something, when you have excess. That is the meaning of surplus. How many doctors do we have in Nigeria? You know, as of 2019, the president of the Nigerian Medical Association was crying out that uh, we were running out of doctors. So as of 2019, the man said that we had only 42,000 doctors for a population of 200 million people. 200 million divided by 42,000. That means that one Nigerian doctor is taking care of almost 5,000 people. How is that even feasible? How is that possible? And do you know how many doctors have left since 2019? Only God knows. How is that surplus? Chief Ungige, do you not have a calculator in your office? You mean the Ministry of Labor and Employment cannot afford to buy your calculator? What a shame. See your life. In fact, Channel TV should have given the man a calculator that day to calculate. What is the population of this Saudi Arabia that we're talking about? 34 million. Thank you very much. And how many doctors do they have right now in Saudi Arabia? 113,000 medical doctors. Do you guys see what I'm seeing with the corner of my koro koro eyes? That means that in Saudi Arabia, one doctor is treating 265 people, just 265. Yet, they did not say that they have a surplus. They are even looking for more. They are trying to recruit in Nigeria. U.S. population is 330 million. Only like 130 million more than that of Nigerian population. How many doctors do we have in America? 985,000 doctors. Almost 1 million doctors, which means that one doctor in America is treating 332 people and they are still looking for more. So then Point newspaper reported that they suspended the recruitment because DSS dispatched doctors and arrested journalists. But then DSS saying this did not happen. We don't know who to believe. We know Punch never lies. Ha <laughs> ha! Chief, your own doctors are treating 5,000 people and you have their liver. Sorry, my father, I'm not abusing you. You know I can never. Who am I? But you have their gods to go on national television and talk trash. Ah, Baba. Arasin Jam just say Nero no ni. He bole fila kaye yin si. Ah, Emma Binu. It's just a question. You're not even afraid of thunder, thunder and fire. You're not afraid of the gods. And if we have enough doctors in Nigeria, why are Nigerians spending two billion dollars annually on medical tourism? Have you not put two and two together? Shift. Don't let me look you in the eye. Emma Jam, what you don't beg me, don't beg me. But uh, why won't people leave their country? Because it's not just about poor salaries and so on. Security keeps going down the drain. If the Nigerian Defense Academy can be attacked where is safe in the country where can we be safe in the country i'm sure that you guys heard that the defense academy in kaduna where the elite members of the military train a place that is supposed to be one of the most protected and important military installations in nigeria was attacked they said by an undetermined number of gunmen. I said, Jesus. They were, you see, killing two officers and kidnapping a third officer. You know, there are reports that they are launching a rescue effort to get this third officer back. We're praying that this goes well. But some people are already reporting that the man has been killed. I said, ah, please. We're hoping that is not the case. You know, this just adds fuel to the fire of what we've been saying for God knows how long about taking security importance in Nigeria. Gunmen are not just kidnapping people now. They are brazenly, openly attacking military bases. 
How is that even possible? Military base is far to do along. Please, hopefully the government will ensure that they rescue the man that was kidnapped at the Defense Academy safely. Because I can't imagine what his family, as well as the families of those that have been kidnapped, are going through right now. And it wasn't just in Kaduna that this happened. We talked about just in the last episode, but guess what? A group of gunmen have killed another 36 people in play two states, Haba. So guess what? Young people marched to the government house with the bodies of these 36 people that were recently killed. My heart breaks for the victims as well as their family members. I can't even imagine what they are going through. I got an email from a lecturer at the University of Jos who asked to be anonymous. He said that Fulanese have been attacking villagers, killing the indigents in Jos, destroying their farms and houses. He said the state and federal government did nothing, said nothing. Worst of all, no media house covered the stories, no military response, no press conference, nothing. And he said that the military base is not far from where all this is happening, by the way. Many students are missing since August 14th. Some staff members are also missing. And then he gave an example that the indigents were conducting a mass funeral for some of the victims on August 14th when two vehicles loaded with armed Fulani killers arrived so that they could go and kill the people that were burying the dead. The locals discovered where they were going and decided to take loss into their own hands. But without waste of time, there was the military response, press releases, and curfew immediately. So he's trying to say that the government has been one-sided, that when the locals were being killed, the government didn't do anything. But when the local people decided to take loss into their hands, that the government was swift to action trying to defend the people that had been killing the local indigents. I don't even know how to process this. It's been heartbreaking that the government has been one-sided. At the same time, I would never encourage locals to take the loss into their own hands because the innocent will be killed when people take loss into their own hands. I mean, look at the 23 Muslim faithfuls that we talked about in the last episode. There are reports that the main reason why they were killed was because they were Muslims, just like the Fulani headsmen that have been killing the locals. What do these people have to do with the headsmen? They were not the headsmen. They were not the ones that killed people. They were just travelers. We cannot continue like this in Nigeria and we keep wondering why people are living. My heart breaks for the victims as well as their family members. I can't even imagine what they are going through. In the meantime, let me know what you guys think about these two stories. Not just the security issues, but do you think that we're facing brain drain in Nigeria or not. It would be great to hear from Nigerian doctors if you've left Nigeria as a doctor or if you're in Nigeria and you're a medical doctor, how do you feel with everything that is going on, especially if you're committed to staying in the face of insistent strikes and poor pay? You guys now don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. Moving on to Uganda, ladies and gentlemen. As you guys know, Afghanistan has been taken over by the Taliban. The U.S. has pulled out of the country. They pulled the military out of the country. There's a lot to say about the way the U.S. pulled out. I've seen all kinds of reactions online. Some people are blaming it on Trump for starting the withdrawal process as well as releasing the leader of Taliban from prison. I've seen some people talking about the fact that the Afghan soldiers did not defend their country when the Taliban came. And yes, I do understand that the U.S. has been there for 20 years without making progress. I understand all of that. But personally, I feel like the way the U.S. pulled out was too abrupt. Also, Biden is the president right now. So he's the one in charge. And I'm glad that he took full responsibility. But all I could think about is the people who have nowhere to go. Him taking responsibility. What does it mean to them in terms of their safety, their security? You know what I mean? Like, is it enough to just say, I took responsibility? Or is it enough to blame it on the fact that Trump was the one that started the withdrawal process and released the Taliban leader? And of course, I've seen people who are saying that, well, what do you want the U.S. to do? They've been there for 20 years. I'm aware of the fact that the Afghan military has been infiltrated by Taliban for years, and so that made it impossible for U.S. to be successful with what they were trying to do there. So I'm aware of all that, but the question is, could the U.S. have done this in a different way without doing it so abruptly that we leave millions of people vulnerable? So, as the people of Afghanistan are fleeing their country, several countries have begun opening up their borders to them, including Uganda. Yes, the Ugandan government actually received their first van of refugees from Afghanistan on Thursday. The first group of 51 Afghan evacuees fleeing the Taliban takeover of Afghanistan has arrived to Uganda, where they will be given temporary refuge. That is so nice of Uganda. I mean, people have been praising Uganda from left and right. We're all very proud of what Uganda is doing. At the same time, though, some people are saying, well, they didn't actually volunteer to have the refugees in Uganda. It was the U.S. government that requested and Uganda agreed. So they are meant to be in Uganda temporarily. They're not supposed to be there permanently. According to officials, the evacuees, including men, women and children, will only be staying temporarily. 
until they are resettled by the United States and other countries. And the U.S. is fronting the cost of Uganda hosting them. Now, the other side of the story is the fact that many Ugandans think that it's hypocritical because their government is not exactly taking care of its own citizens. However, some Ugandan nationals in Afghanistan are yet to return. They were meant to come on the same flight but were unable to do so due to challenges in accessing the airport in Kabul. Not to talk about human rights violations in the country, but they are taking refugees. So what do you guys think about this? I mean, I'm glad that they're taking the refugees. These refugees desperately need a place to go. Even if it's in the meantime, I'm glad that they will have a place to go. So I love to hear from Ugandans what they think about this story. And if you're not from Uganda, what do you think about Uganda taking the refugees from Afghanistan? You guys might not know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. Okay guys, move closer. I'd like to introduce you to Bemi Hackins, a designer that makes Ashwebi for Nigerians in the diaspora. And not just Ashwebi, she makes couture, she makes bespoke custom dresses, and she is based in Los Angeles, California, LA. You will find the link to her Instagram page in the description below where you can see more designs by her. And Tig Bemi Leke put up her photo. You see, look at her looking so fine, looking so fly all by herself. My sister, in case you are watching, you have done well. We are very, very proud of you. Look at you looking sassy. <laughs> so normally when I advertise for designers on this show, I would wear something that they've designed, but she didn't even know about this. It's her sister that arranged for this ad for her. What a very nice sister. That's amazing. In any case, Antigua Mleke, in case you're watching, I'm a size four. <laughs> Well, before the baby, you know, I, I was a size 4 before the baby. So I'm waiting for my body to get really well. So kala, kala, you know that before I can, before I start exercising again so that I can go back to size 4. Also, the bust has become bustier. <laughs> but jokes aside, <laughs> if you live in the US or anywhere in the abroad and you need someone to custom make an outfit for you, please contact my sister here. Her details are in the description below. We're so proud of what you're doing, by the way. And whenever I'm in LA, we must submit. Also, I'd like to give a huge shout out and congratulations to a couple that watches this show on their 20th wedding anniversary. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. and Mrs. Yinka Babalola, they are celebrating their 20th wedding anniversary. I said, ah, 20 years, no be joke, yo, no be bread and butter. <laughs> Wishing you guys many more years of blessings. So congratulations to you guys. We're so happy for you. Do not forget that if you want to promote your product on this show or give shout outs for someone's birthday or anniversary, all you need to do is send us an email at advert at adelafayon.com. Don't forget this Saturday, the 28th, we're talking about a lasting self-esteem and you can join us via zoom all right y'all it's been real and i'm keeping it right up in here don't forget to follow me on facebook today and instagram and if you're yet to subscribe to my youtube channel i'm watching you on plasma tv press the subscribe button and the bell button until next time i'm gonna see you later peace out Seventy-seven. I, I can't go all the way to eighty. Like say some. Who for that? I'm trying to leave this handbag. Go. Let's see. Seventy-six. No, Seventy-seven. What? Before you say that, ask me what I'm doing. Okay. Oh my God. This handbag is actually heavy. It's like I'm lifting weight for real, for real. Oh, seven. Oh, why did you? I thought I turned it on. You know, I'm practicing. Hopefully, someday I'll make Nigeria proud at the Olympics. Are you starting recording? Why didn't you say something? You were supposed to say something. You were, you were supposed to say something. You said you laughed. <laughs> Can I have like bloppers from this? You started recording. Oh, snap. Why didn't you say something? Sorry, my people. Where do I put this? Okay. Ooh, that's more than shooting the show. I don't know. It's what time takes.